Hey guys, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel, 10 to Life, where I am bringing you full true crime cases in under 10 minutes. Full cases, start to finish, but only what you want to hear. None of the boring storylines or the empty plots, just the key facts, the most insane details, and all the unexpected stuff we know happens along the way. I'm coming to you directly from my apartment here in Brooklyn, New York, which if you're watching the video version of this on my YouTube channel, you can see beautiful New York behind me. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this, but you want to check out the video version, feel free to head over to my YouTube channel. If you guys like what you hear, please like, comment, share, review, and don't forget to subscribe by clicking that subscribe button below. If you have any case recommendations, send them my way. I would love to hear them. And don't forget to follow me on social at underscore Annie Elise. So let's get into the case. Hey guys, welcome back. So holy shit, do I have a case for you today. It is happening right now in real time. It happened this week, a brand new update this morning, and it is insane. So let's jump right into it. Fahim Saleh is a 33-year-old man who lives in New York City, and he is a self-made millionaire. He's the CEO of his own tech company, and he has had a ton of different companies leading up to the one he currently has, and really is self-made to the core. Fahim was born in Saudi Arabia to Bangladesh parents, and they soon settled in a small town in New York called Poughkeepsie, which is right off of the Hudson River. After graduating from Bentley University in 2009, Fahim started his very first business, and he created an app called Prank Dial. And what that was was basically recording pre-recorded prank dial calls that you would send off to your friends, and he ended up making that company and building it into a $10 million business. Fahim then went on to found a motorcycle ride-sharing company in Bangladesh, so similar to Uber, but with motorcycles. I mean, very unique and very smart and innovative. Ended up leaving that company in 2018 and started another company, which is is the similar concept in Nigeria. So all around very smart, very successful, clearly very intelligent man. He was self-made like I mentioned, a complete millionaire. He's only 33 years old. He now lives in New York City and just all around great guy. Now we know oftentimes that these wealthy people, especially when they're younger, can be targeted and people can take advantage of them and use them because they know that they have an exceeding amount of wealth, that sometimes if they are in fact younger, that they could potentially get manipulated no matter how smart they are. People really do try to use these people and really come in as opportunists a lot of the time. And unfortunately, this was no different for Fahim. And in fact, he had a personal assistant who stole tens of thousands of dollars from Fahim. But like the good guy that he is, rather than calling the authorities or pressing charges or having him arrested, Fahim simply said, you know what? Let's work out a payment plan. You can pay me back. I get it. People fall on hard times. I'm not going to press any legal action and we'll work it out that way. I mean, he was just an all around good guy, a generous guy. And again, no malicious intent with really anything. And most people wouldn't be this gracious under circumstances like that because not only is somebody stealing from you, but it's a different level of betrayal because it's somebody who works for you, who's your personal assistant, who you're so close to, so you feel betrayed, but he still continued to be completely gracious about it and said, you know what, we're gonna broker out this deal of a repayment plan and it's gonna be all good. Just an all around amazing good guy. And now he lives in Manhattan, New York in a $2.2 million condo in the Lower East Side. His condo was on the seventh floor of this building, 1,400 square feet, two bedroom, and it had a private elevator that when you take the elevator up, it gives you direct access to the unit. I mean, for 33 years old, that's pretty damn good. I would say he's made it. Earlier this week, on Tuesday around 3.30 in the afternoon, after not hearing from him all day, Fahim's sister decided to go in and check on him. It was really unlike him. He wasn't returning calls. He wasn't returning texts. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to just pop by. I'm going to check in on him at his apartment, make sure he's all right, and make sure nothing's out of the ordinary. And when she arrived at her brother's beautiful luxury apartment in Manhattan, New York, she discovered a true horrifying nightmare. Upon entering her brother's apartment, she looks around looking for his brother, probably calling his name, checking in to see if he had maybe overslept, if he was just taking some time for himself, and she soon discovers a human torso just off of the living room. And at this point, her mind has to be racing because she sees this torso. I'm sure her instinct immediately is this isn't Fahim or maybe it is Fahim, but she sees this torso with no limbs, no head, probably thinking, is this a dream? Am I in a nightmare? What's going on? And just in complete shock. And not only the shock of the discovery, but the shock of 
Who could have done this to my brother? He was such a great guy. He had virtually no enemies. Who would have come in and done such a horrible crime? And what kind of killer would do this kind of murder in such a horrific way? Shortly after discovering the torso, she discovers other body parts that were in different bags throughout the apartment. And she also discovers an electric saw still plugged into the wall that was used for the dismemberment. Clearly, the crime scene had not been cleaned up. The neighbors describe his sister as wailing and screaming, he has no head, he has no head, and pointing to her arms to indicate that his limbs had been cut off as well. It is so horrible and heartbreaking. And of course, she was completely distraught because not only had she just discovered her family member had been murdered, but to discover them in such a way of being dismembered, decapitated. I can't even imagine the level of shock and trauma that that discovery must have caused for her. The police are immediately called and they arrive on scene and they start their investigation that goes all through Tuesday night and into the early hours of Wednesday morning. And they are searching that apartment top to bottom, looking for any physical evidence, any sort of trace evidence, forensic evidence, anything to help them identify who this killer is, what was the motive, who was this killer, how, what was the crime that actually took place and what was the cause of death, really trying to figure out what took place in this gruesome discovery in this beautiful high-rise apartment building in New York City. One of the key pieces of evidence that the investigators discover is the surveillance footage from the building. And in that footage, it shows Fahim entering the elevator from the lobby. And remember, that elevator gives him direct access into his unit. And it shows him entering the elevator and then a man entering shortly behind him. They describe him as a well-dressed man, a three-piece suit, wearing a black face mask, carrying a duffel bag, and pretending to go to another floor. Although he didn't in fact select another floor, that was all a ruse because he was following Fahim and when the elevator doors opened, he blitz attacked him. Investigators say after the murder, the killer used Fahim's credit card to get in an Uber or a rideshare company car, travel to a local Home Depot, pick up cleaning supplies and use that to sanitize the entire crime scene. The killer then returned to Fahim's house the very next day, that Tuesday, and started the dismemberment and the cleanup of the scene. Officials say that when his sister arrived Tuesday afternoon around 3.30 p.m. and was buzzing in to come in, that it must have startled the killer, and that's why everything was left behind because he fled in such a hurry. That's why the saw was still plugged into the wall, that's why certain body parts hadn't been bagged up, and that's why the other body parts in bags hadn't been disposed of as of yet, because apparently her arrival startled him and he fled in a hurry. That is extremely frightening, because imagine if the killer had not fled the scene, if he had decided he was going to hide behind a corner or hide behind a wall and attack Fahim's sister as well and murder her. I mean, it's horrible that he fled, because yes, he wasn't identified, we didn't know at all who this person was, what the motive was, or anything like that, but it could have been two murders rather than the one. According to the medical examiner, Fahim died from stab wounds to the neck and to the torso, and the manner of death was a homicide. Additional footage shows that coming off of that elevator when it opened to Fahim's apartment, that there was a struggle between the killer and Fahim, and that the killer tased Fahim to gain control. So officials believe that the killer used that taser to immobilize Fahim and then proceeded to stab him to death. Security footage from inside the elevator also shows that after the murder, the killer comes in to the elevator with a portable vacuum and starts vacuuming the entire elevator to clean up the trace evidence. If you've ever seen the movie American Psycho, you're going to understand this reference, but if you haven't, I'm going to explain it to you really quick. American Psycho is a movie about a serial killer, and it stars Christian Bale, and he is very OCD, very well-dressed, you know, very meticulous in his crimes and his cleanup, and this crime is reminiscent of that. We hear about the man entering the elevator in the three-piece suit. He has the mask. He has the duffel bag. We hear about him vacuuming and trying to clean up the scene in the elevator with a portable vacuum. I mean, it rings so true to this movie. And the pieces of the killer dismembering the body and trying to clean up that way. I mean, it has very similar ties to what this horrible movie is about, which begs the question, is he truly a psychopath killer like this movie? Or did he gain the inspiration for this crime and the cleanup of the crime from this movie? Because it really does mirror everything so similarly. In fact, in the movie, a chainsaw is also used on one of the victims. So not only is the crime and the suspect really similar to the movie American Psycho, but in fact, initially investigators say that this crime looked so precise that they thought it was a professional hit. They said the crime and the cleanup looked like a professional job, which led them to believe it was a hit and that it was so meticulous, which that is horrifying that somebody is that good 
at not only homicide and murder, but cleanup as well, to where somebody is coming in thinking, oh no, this must have been a professional hit. This isn't a, just a regular Joe Schmo civilian that did this. That is so scary. Investigators continue to gather evidence over the next few days, and they soon identify a suspect. And that suspect is 21-year-old Tyrese Hespil. And Tyrese is the personal assistant to Fahim, who we talked about earlier when Fahim discovered that he stole tens of thousands of dollars from Fahim. And despite Fahim working out this payment plan for him and saying, you know, I'm not going to file charges, I'm not going to press charges against you, I'm not going to call the cops, he still chose to murder him. Why? What was the motive? Yes, you had to repay the money that you stole, but it's not like he was calling the police. It's not like you were going to be arrested. What is the motive for the murder? Shortly after the discovery, sources do say that although Fahim did broker this repayment plan with Tyrese to say, you know, pay me back for everything you stole, Tyrese agreed to it originally, and then he decided to renege on the deal and said, I'm not going to pay you anymore. And what started as a simple act of charity to help this man out and help him repay what he stole turned into a horrible act of murder. And really quickly, I just want to circle back to the American Psycho reference that I made earlier because Tyrese isn't as intelligent as we all thought. Remember how I mentioned the killer used Fahim's credit card to purchase not only the rideshare to Home Depot, but also the cleaning supplies that was used in the attempted cleanup of the crime scene? Well, that is how Tyrese was caught. Because although the credit card that was used was in fact Fahim's, it was in Tyrese's name. He used his corporate company card to take the rideshare from Fahim's house to Home Depot and then buy the supplies. So it was in his name, yes, but the bill was going to Fahim. So of course the police were going to discover that right away and discover the name that's on the card. I mean, it makes no sense. What kind of idiot do you have to be to use your corporate card at the crime scene where you're killing your boss? You are so dumb. And after that discovery, Tyrese was named an official suspect. And today, Friday, July 17th, earlier this morning in New York City, Tyrese was arrested. And according to two officials, he is expected to be charged with second degree murder in the grisly murder and killing of Fahim. Fahim's family released a statement and they said, Fahim is more than what you are reading. He is so much more. His brilliant and innovative mind took everyone who was a part of his world on a journey and he made sure never to leave anyone behind. And this again is just a testament to what an amazing man Fahim was. And it is so sad that this young, selfish, horrible person decided to end the life of Fahim when he was just 33 years old and had such a bright future ahead of him. It is so tragic. And layered on top of that tragedy, which is horrible enough, there's also the added layer of his poor sister making the discovery of his body and his body in pieces. I cannot imagine the level of trauma that must have caused to see a dismembered body that belongs to your brother decapitated, limbs torn off. It is so horrible. There is expected to be a press conference soon in the near future. I think actually even maybe possibly this afternoon where they'll announce the charges and hopefully we'll get some answers. Hopefully we'll get some answers as to what was the motive? Was it the financial piece of it? Or why did you stop payment? Why did you have to go and murder him? I Hopefully he speaks out and we'll see what goes from there. Because this man, from all looks of it, he's 21 years old. He was his personal assistant. I mean, the level of hatred that must have been boiling inside to take him to this level is truly unimaginable. So I hope we do start to learn a little bit of what was going on in his mind and what the reason truly is behind such a horrible crime taking place. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Fahim's entire family, especially his sister. I am so sorry that you had to make that discovery, and I am very, very sorry you lost your brother. I personally have a brother, and I can't imagine what I would do without him. And I'm so sorry that you had to discover that in such a way. I'm sure everybody watching this will agree with me that we hope justice is served swiftly and harshly, and that he gets the maximum possible sentence for this horrific, grisly crime. Thanks so much for listening to today's case with me, you guys. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe by hitting that subscribe button below. If you're listening to the podcast version of this, please go ahead and rate it if you liked it. And I love hearing from you guys. So please comment, like, share. Let's get some exposure out there on this case so that we make sure that Tyrese is truly held accountable and justice is served. And I'll keep you updated as we hear more. As a reminder, we've also got some true crime merch that just landed. The link is in the description box below. And if you have any case recommendations, as always, please send them my way. My email address is also in the description box below. Thanks again so much for listening with me, you guys, and I will talk with you soon. Bye.